and welcome back to another Amazon selling video. So I asked in a previous episode like if you guys want to hear about my mistakes and it was kind of a resounding yes please share your mistakes so hopefully we don't make them as well. Some of them are comical, some of them are costly, and some of them are bad. So I just thought I would go ahead and share with you the mistakes I've made so far in three years of selling on Amazon. So honestly some of them are really funny especially the ones around printers. So one time I bought the wrong ink. I had an inkjet printer for the first two years. I actually just got a laser jet recently but I had an inkjet because I had a printer and why not use it if it works. Here's why not because the ink is expensive. I literally could have bought five laser jet printers and the cost of all the ink that I was buying. So first of all if you have an inkjet and you're actually doing this full-time just go ahead and get a laser jet or a thermal or whatever floats your boat but get rid of that inkjet. So I bought the wrong inkjet cartridge I think it was a 200 that mine took and I accidentally bought 220. Went to replace it because you know you have to have all the color for an inkjet even though all you're printing it's black and it would not work. And I finally took the ink back to Walmart where I had got it and was like, this won't work. I don't know what the problem is. And it's around that time that I realized I got the 220 instead of 200. I might have freaked out a little bit because I just wanted to drop this stupid shipment off at UPS. Luckily, you could print at the UPS store. I think it costs a dollar a label or something. So I did end up getting it out, but oh my gosh, I was so frustrated and I totally freaked out. Totally. <laughs> had a frustrated meltdown. Another thing that I didn't do for the first couple months is I didn't use Goo Gone and I did not use my hair dryer to turn to take off labels. Everyone kept saying a heat gun and I was like well I don't have a heat gun. If you are taking labels off and you are not using a hair dryer, a Scotty peeler, and Goo Gone, you are doing it wrong. Stop everything and get those. You probably have a hair dryer or someone in your family. If not just go get a real cheap one. You don't have to get a heat gun, but you can, I guess, if you want to get a heat gun instead. I've never used it. But the hairdryer on the low setting, just a little bit of heat and a Scotty Pillar makes those labels come right off so easy. And then the Goo Gone just gets rid of any sticky residue that's left over. So that was a huge mistake, frustrating, time consuming, that now it's just so much easier. Okay, so now some of the costly mistakes. Buying things too late in the season. So two Valentines ago, I, it was probably February and I was like, oh, look at these really cheap, they say Valentine's Day on them, but people will probably still buy them, right? No. I ended up having to request them back a couple months later. Not a single one sold. Luckily, I only got four of them, but I sent them in too late and so they didn't sell and now my family was eating turtles. I mean, it was a delicious mistake, I guess. This also, you'd think I learned, but I did it again this last winter. I sent in some snow suits too late in the season. And so I just actually got rid of them recently for like $9. I was like, what do I have to do to get these to sell? And luckily they sold months later. Another mistake I have made in my retail arbitrage is buying too much of something. So sometimes it happens and you're like can't believe this crazy deal you just found and you want to have it all and you're like look at all of this on the shelf i have to get it all it's gonna sell like hot cakes so i did that with an olay face wash i found it at ollie's and it was 2.99 and there was a ton of them and i was scanning it and i did all normally when it's too good to be true there's bells that go off and so I do all the research. I search on Keepa, I make sure that the sales rank has been steady, I check the price, make sure that's been steady, and it was. So I went ahead and bought, I think I could have bought probably 150, luckily I only bought 72 of them, and I sent them in. And then the price started tanking. Because apparently I was just one of the first RA shoppers to find them at Ollie's and they were at all the different Ollie's and so now everyone's kind of tanking the price. And on top of that, they don't work. So it's something with the way that the, the face wash like squared out of it and it was broken so it literally wouldn't come out. So then I started getting the returns and people wanted a replacement so Amazon ships it to them for free. So now I'm out two of those. And it just kept going on and on. It got to the point where I just said, you know, it's great, I'm gonna ask for them back. I think there was like eight at that point. So I got 72 of them, they cost $2.99. Altogether it was a $250 investment in this. And it says here that I profited 56 cents on every one, but I don't really think that's true because they were sending some out. Obviously it costs a little bit of money to ship it into Amazon. So it says I probably profited $40. Honestly, it, probably lucky if I broke even. So that was a mistake. 
And I'll save the biggest mistake for last. You can get IP complaints here and there. Sometimes the brand will send it through Messenger on Amazon, which is not the correct way to do it. So I ignore those because if they really want their brand restricted, they go through Amazon, not directly. Plus, you never know if it's actually the brand. It could just be another seller being rude and trying to get you off the listing. But if it comes from Amazon, we're talking amazon.com email addresses, you have to reply. Don't ignore it. I just thought they were like, okay, you can't sell this anymore. And I was like, fine, whatever. I took the listing down and didn't sell it anymore. But short while later, I got shut down because I didn't respond to the email. So if you get an Amazon complaint, if it comes right from Amazon, make sure you respond. You do whatever it is they say to do. This whole time I was freaking out. I think altogether I was only shut down for two days and this was back, I think it was like maybe a year into selling when this happened. I was able to get it back all on my own. I just, Amazon tells you what they wanna hear and so you say it to them and you tell them you're not gonna do it and you send them the receipts, even though they're just TJ Maxx receipts, well in my case they were, you say, no, they're not counterfeit, they're real, like here it was. So definitely make sure you respond. That's like the main thing. I'm really glad I didn't have to spend a bunch of money and people spend thousands of dollars with lawyers trying to do all this. I was able to get it back on my own. It was very stressful. I think it was back and forth with emails maybe like six times, but I did it <laughs> and I haven't gotten shut down again. So those are my mistakes. Hopefully they help you not to make them. Some of them you're gonna make. That's just a part of it. You're gonna lose money here and there. In the grand scheme of things though, I am making money, so there's that. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you need help getting ungated in anything like topical grocery, OTC, toys, I have guides for that, super helpful, step-by-step -step how to do it. I also have a Facebook group, so if you wanna join my Bolo group and you'll have a list of profitable leads every month that you can go source, so you're not spending time scanning and not finding anything, definitely check that out below. And I will see you here for another video next week.